Happy Sunday. I think it's Sunday. I am... The light was much better before. Mm. Let's go this way. Ooh, let's go this way. Um, I had a bit of a thing earlier. I'm not entirely sure what happened, but I had like this, um, this little kind of spasmy loss of the ability to speak fit kind of thing. So we have agreed, well, I have agreed and conceded defeat that this is where I have been to be for a few days. I am currently watching Star Trek Enterprise and it is one of my favourite episodes where the chief engineer gets pregnant and he's a man so I like I like the twist on that. He <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. He gets pregnant to an alien race. And anyway, if you've ever seen the episode and you're a Trekkie, you'll understand exactly what I'm talking about. So we had a bit of a... Um, we had a bit of a... Uh, crafting day yesterday with the kiddies. With Eden, which was nice. And... Um, so they've painted their rocks. Um, we have found painted rocks and around the place it's, you know, and post the photos on Upper Hut Rocks. So you find painted rocks and then you put painted rocks out and when someone finds them. They um, put photos of them up as well. So that's, that's kind of cool. Um, also got an email today that there's a, um, I was one of the first women let into the army band, the full-time New Zealand army band when I was just a wee slip of a girl and, um, there's a bit of a get together with the army band up here in Wellington on the 31st and I've been invited along and I'm really excited so I'm going to be working mm, excuse me mm, I'm going to be working hard so that I can be there for that and uh, catch up with some old chums and um, you know see the, the current New Zealand Army Band in action. The Veterans Band um, has been in Belgium for the 100th anniversary of Passchendaele, so that would have been very moving for them. Um, I was fortunate enough to visit the battlefields in 1995. Oh dear, sounds like there's some drama going on, but Daddy's got it in hand, I think. Um, <clears throat> I was fortunate enough to be able to go and see the um, the battlefields. Oh God, my hair. <laughs> yeah, just one of those things, going to have to wait anyway. Passchendaele, it was a really moving experience when, when I went there all those years ago and I was watching the performances of the band and just feeling really proud of them and reminiscing about my time in the band which unfortunately was cut short. Back then they had fraternisation rules and I was um, marrying a, a young officer and uh, I was a private soldier, so there was no fraternisation between the ranks. So one of us had to leave the army. And, you know, by naturally that... It been, uh, he had more of a career ahead of him. So I left the army and the army band and went on to get married and and have a family. The weird thing is that I've been processing is that um, 
that young officer that I married and we had children together and we were together for a very very long time we traveled and I always took my role as an army wife very very seriously and always tried to leave a place better than when I found it and um and things like that I I you know we talked about what um what his career meant to both of us as well and my commitment to that having sacrificed my career and the interesting thing is now that um that young second lieutenant is now a brigadier in london and has been in um belgium with the veterans band with all the the people i was in the army band with so it's been an interesting time for me to do the mental gymnastics and emotional gymnastics around that all because I know what an important time that would have been for all of them. Um, so yeah, it was it was kind of interesting to to watch that unfold and there was a part of me also that was just thinking, oh, sometimes it's just not fair if, because if I wasn't sick, if I didn't have this awful disease then I'm now in a position where I could become a veteran um, army band musician but unfortunately that that's been taken away and it's just it's an interesting and crazy thing to watch other people sort of living living the life that you always thought was going to be yours and here this is like the the collision of all of the hopes and dreams that went into um you know that relationship with that young officer and and growing with him as he continued his career and um then ultimately for our separation and our divorce that both of the major parts of my life um, you know, being the army band and and that that relationship, my my first my first marriage. Um, they've continued on together, in in many ways, and and I have now this whole different life, and I've I've got a the beautiful life, a love wonderful life that I always wanted, with sort of being able to stay put and and build a home and finish the landscape of my family. Um, and to to become a working artist and and to explore and creativity and and stability, all those things that aren't necessarily possible when you're an army family. You know, I had I had my two older children who were army children, and there's a great responsibility that I I feel about. Um, the lack of stability that they had growing up and that I'm able to provide that for them now even though they are grown up children I'm able to provide that stable home and then going on and, and getting married to, to my beautiful husband and finishing our family and all of that and I, I had just started playing music again after so many years and you know, I had hopes that I would be able to um, reconnect musically with with my musical past that I had fairly um, abruptly had to had to end due to the rules back then. You know, we're talking thirty years ago now. Um, well, not quite thirty. Twenty five years ago now. So it's been a week of a lot of mental gym and emotional gymnastics kind of making sense of that and dealing with the but it's not fair that I've, you know, I, I'm in this uh, amazing situation and I'm sick and I don't, and I don't know exactly what that means for the future and things like that. So I guess that sort of process has taxed my my brain a little bit and I had a bit of a uh, 
a bit of, I don't know what it was. It almost felt like a complete disconnection through my spinal cord. And it was quite scary, but it, it didn't last too long. I couldn't speak and went floppy and they got very distressed. Um, but I'm, I'm much better now. So I just wanted to sort of talk about those things, about the army band and um, the brigadier and how, you know, the army life is such a unique experience and, and it's a, a unique community and I'm very proud to have been part of it for so long. Um, but I guess it's... Um, that each time it comes up and I'm I'm faced with it, I also find a way to get through that. Because um, there's a lot of grief tied up for me and all the things that have gone and and all the changes and what's happening now. There's a tremendous amount of grief and a tremendous amount of, but it's not fair. And there's some days when I do want to throw a tantrum about it and I do want to say, but you know, really, really, whoever's planning this. Really, I can't, aren't I there yet? But that doesn't take away the pride I feel for my alma mater. I think that's the right word for the army band. They really are. If you if you're ever privileged enough to become part of that, that's a really special thing. That's a really unique thing. And um, yeah, it was like a culmination of so many different aspects of my life. And the only thing that was missing was me. And here I am. And this will pass. And I will rest. And tomorrow, we'll see what happens. We'll see how things feel then. But in the meantime, I'm quite excited about the opportunity to go to a you know a bit of a function and a catch up the end of the month and that will be that will be really special too I'm, I always wave the flag of the army band it's yeah my time was far too short and it took me I don't know 10 12 years to get over having had to leave it um, my time wasn't done I wasn't I wasn't done and I had to go you know, duty called and um yeah took me such a long time to get over not being part of that anymore uh, but even through the years through through all the years of being an army officer's wife um, I always took that really seriously and I always felt very proud of my army my own army days not just my husband's army days but my army days and what that meant and what was important for me to bring to the party of this process um, so I guess I'll talk about that. I'm I'm writing a lot at the moment, um, sort of getting my memoirs done. And yeah, I guess it's on my mind a lot because I'm getting to that point where I can start talking, where I'm starting to talk about as a young girl, as a 16 year old, that I had these, um, I had this dream. I had a dream that I was going to be in the army band and um, and how that came about. So it's an interesting time in my life to, to to go back to those places emotionally and it just happens to coincide with Passchendaele and the Veterans Band and the Brigadier being over there as well and yeah and my not being there in any capacity so it's good it's good to look on it at least while I'm lying here and we don't know what the future holds it's really quite special to have something to look back on, you know, um, because that's what I've got. Uh, that that's that's what I've got to give uh, my memories. Um, and I'm just allowing myself to feel that, which is really cool. So I'm probably waffling on, and I've probably said the same thing 15 different times, and that is not one of my finer qualities. But I can, um, I think I better go.
I can feel things getting croaky. I will um, check in, yeah, whenever something else pops into my head. This just feels, um, it feels significant. It feels significant to feel this. Uh, yeah, it feels significant to feel this and that it's actually okay. And I think we need to tell each other much more often that it's okay to feel and to validate and, and, and to kind of question and... And even if there's no answers, it's it's okay to still think the question. I mean, I have no answers for the situation that I'm in. But for my own sense of existence, I think um, it's been important to 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 explore that, ask the questions, you know, and to to validate that everything that was my life before has carried on and life carries on without me now my life it's and that's I know, I know I'm waffling but this is why Emmy awareness they do a thing called millions missing because so many millions of us are missing from our own lives um, and we send a pair of shoes in to the organisation with their name and how long we've been sick and the, the level of our disability. And because my, dis my level of disability is, is, is very high. Um, and it's called Millions Missing because millions of us are missing from our lives. We are living, but we are, we are alive, but not living. And so, yeah, I definitely felt like one of those who who were missing this week. So I, ha I have a lot more healing to do around all of this, I think. And I'm in the perfect place to do that. I have a very gentle place to heal, to heal my life while there's still time. I can, I can, um, if there's anything that I appreciate about this disease, it's that it has given me the space to heal, um, to heal my life. That's fairly significant. Right. I better go before this is too big to even load up. Happy Sunday and happy thoughts.